My name is Courtney Gilbert. I'm Curator of Visual Arts at Sun Valley Museum of Art. And the exhibition that we have up this winter is called Deeds Not Words, Women Working for Change. This exhibition, like many of our exhibitions, is part of a big idea project. And in this case, we're examining different ways that women have worked for social change over the last couple of centuries. The exhibition looks not just at the suffrage movement, but also at other ways that women have worked for social change, including economic equality, dress reform, civil rights, the abolition of slavery, and to make changes in the world of art. The exhibition features artwork by five contemporary artists and one early 20th century architect. Women in Idaho and in other states in the American West actually got the right to vote much earlier than women in the rest of the United States. Idaho was actually the fourth state to give women the right to vote and did so in 1896. For this project, we invited a painter and printmaker named Pat Boas to come to Idaho for a residency and to spend time studying that history and to produce a body of work in response. When she returned to her studio, she began work on a series of five paintings that she calls Sentinels. As she went into this project, she was going to make paintings that were sort of roughly based on the monograms of some of the women who were leaders of the suffrage movement in the American West. In the wake of the murder of George Floyd last summer and the protests across the country in support of Black Lives Matter, she began thinking about the idea that social change often requires many individuals coming together. And we don't always know their names, just like the silent sentinels who protested, many were arrested, a number of them were jailed for the work that they did. And so she shifted instead to, to making these five paintings that represent the idea of individuals coming together. And they're fairly abstract, but each has a subtitle that alludes both to the content within it and to form within it. Two refer to the idea of public work, the public work that women did in pursuit of suffrage, banner and shield, and then three reflect more of the kind of quiet behind the scenes work that often took place within the home. And each of those terms also has multiple meanings. So a shield, for instance, is something you take into battle, but it also is something you can protect yourself with and hide behind. The work that Pat has made for this show looks at that push and pull between the idea of risking imprisonment for public demonstrations, but also feeling trapped within the home. So another artist in the exhibition is an artist named Elena Del Rivero, who was born in Spain but has been working in New York for the past few decades. Elena has made a number of different bodies of work recently using the idea of the dish towel. And she enlarges them and she's painted them on canvas, she's embroidered them. When she works with them in her studio, she often leaves them on the floor where they pick up stains from like spices and, and wine and coffee and kind of the materials of everyday domestic life. So recently, she won a Guggenheim Fellowship to turn these monstrous dish towels into flags, and she calls them suffrage flags. So we have two nylon flags, one hanging in the exhibition, one hanging outside. Both refer to the idea of the suffrage banner that women would carry on marches, and both have stains on them that are intentional that refer to the idea of the home, too. I saw a talk Elena gave about these these flags, and one of the things she said is that they always carry political meaning, but the kitchen has always been a political space. The kitchen table is the place where people have come together to talk about ideas and to make plans for change. One of the things that draws Elena to the dish towel is that its geometric patterns really prefigure the idea of modernism. They look like geometric abstract paintings. That idea that women were using these modernist objects before modernism even existed is compelling to her. And she's expanded on that idea in a series of small drawings that she calls domestic landscapes. And the patterns on them were inspired by the work of Hilma af Klint, a Swedish artist who was making geometric and biomorphically abstract works at the very beginning of the 20th century before the artists that we think of as the sort of the fathers of modernism had begun working towards abstraction. Coincidentally, references to Hilma af Klint's work also appear in the work of another artist in the exhibition, Angela Ellsworth. Angela Ellsworth is based in Arizona and in New Mexico, and she's well known for work that kind of investigates and challenges our notions about traditional gender roles. In this exhibition, we have two pieces from a more recent body of work that she calls pantaloncini, inspired by pantaloons or by bloomers. And they're made with pearl 
corsage pins and also with colored sewing pins. Tens of thousands go into the making of each of these sculptures, um, along with fabric and steel, or slightly more than life-size sculptures that in some ways allude to the idea of dress reform and the dress reform movement which sought to free women from garments like corsets or hoop skirts. They also serve as sort of a metaphor for armor, for women going into battle, and for the power and strength of the female body, but also I think the discomfort that, that struggle can bring with the pins facing inwards. Lava Thomas is an artist who's based in San Francisco. She works in a variety of media. She works in drawing, in sculpture, in installation, to create work that examines the idea of representation, but also memory and how we memorialize people. The largest is a portrait of Harriet Tubman. It was made from a photograph that was taken of Tubman towards the end of her life. She escaped from slavery in 1849 and then dedicated the rest of her life to the abolition of slavery and to assisting other enslaved peoples in reaching freedom. In this portrait, she's seated in a wooden chair wrapped in a shawl that covers her head. And even though she's in her 90s at this point, she's staring out of the viewer with the kind of strength that I think was part of the work she undertook throughout her life and really marked the way that she lived her life. We also have two portraits from a recent project that Thomas has undertaken called the Montgomery Bus Boycott Mugshot Portraits. While Harriet Tubman's name is really well known, the, the identities of the women whose portraits we have in this exhibition are not. Um, one of them is named Audrey Bell Langford, the other is Ida Mae Caldwell. And both were part of a huge group of women who were willing to risk imprisonment, violence, harassment in order to fight for social justice and for civil rights for African Americans. Thomas has portrayed them really painstakingly beautifully in pencil larger than life with incredible detail and she's taken mugshots that imply criminality and turned them into monuments. The final part of this exhibition is a series of architectural drawings and historic photographs from a socialist intentional community in Southern California that existed from about 1913 to about 1918 called Llano del Rio and the founders of Llano del Rio hired an architect named Alice Constance Austin to design a city and to design housing that would help them meet their kind of egalitarian vision for this new community. We have drawings of the homes that she planned, including floor plans, and what people will notice as they look at them is that some of the floor plans have no kitchens and some just have a tiny kitchenette. And Austin believed, as a feminist and a socialist, that women, the work they had to do in the home was keeping them from pursuing professions they would otherwise be able to pursue. She imagined a city connected by a system of underground tunnels with little electric carts that would run through the city delivering hot meals and also laundry to everybody's home. The reality was that Llano del Rio was never able to realize this vision. Instead, they had over 1,100 people come together to live in a temporary city of kind of platform houses, um, off tent houses and adobe houses and they ran out of money. And so unfortunately, Austin's dream for this wasn't ever achieved. A photographer based in San Diego, Kim Stringfellow, has taken really wonderful photographs of these ruins, including a really impressive grain silo they built as part of their ambitious plans for a successful future. I hope everyone will come in and see this exhibition. I think it's a really great opportunity to think about the ways both seen and unseen that women have always worked to make change in the world and to try and make the world a better place for themselves and for others.